hallelujah. We want to you believe that he has conquered it all. Can you lift your hands and lift your voices and give God praise in this place tonight? Oh, let's give him the praise that he deserves. Let's not miss an opportunity to give him praise and to give him glory and to thank him for who he is and to thank him for what he's doing in our lives. We praise you, Father God. We give you praise in this place. We magnify your name. We glorify your name, Father. Father, we know that you are our king, but you are also our father. And you are a good, good father. And we thank you that you are fighting for us. And we thank you that you are on our side, God. And we thank you that through you, we have victory. The battle has been won. The war has been won. And we give you praise for it, God. We praise you that when we know that when we lift our hands, to lift up our voices and we begin to open up our mouths and sing praises to your name, God. As that song says, miracles start to happen and walls start to fall. If you believe that, just take one more second, a few more seconds and just give a praise. so much. You're with me tonight. Listen, I'm so excited that you guys are here. Um, I just I just love church. I love coming together with my family and just having the time to worship God. And His presence is just so strong in this place. And I know that He's got something special in store for us. Um, as we are getting ready to transition before we turn it over to Pastor Dave for the word, I just very, very quickly have a few announcements that I want to give you and I want to make sure that you take note of. Um, first of all, um, you should have noticed, probably have noticed that in our lobby, um, uh, we have a couple of bins that are outside, a couple of baskets uh, with our different ministry names on it. And those are there for you to fill them up with a whole lot of candy. Yeah. <laughs> We've got our uh, truck or treats that is going to be coming up um, in October. It's, this year is flying and it is going to be here before we know it. And so we are going to be doing truck or treat again on Halloween. This is, the, this is one of the biggest outreaches that we do all year. We set up shop right here in our parking lot. And if you have a car, you've got a a truck on it we invite you to come and bring it and we're going to we decorate those things and we just fill them up with candy and it's just an incredible night this whole area is just the parking lot is just flooded with people from all over our neighborhood that are coming uh, they think that they're just coming out to get some candy from us but we're going to give them candy but we're also going to show them some jesus and we're going to love on, it's an excellent opportunity to love on people and to just uh, really boots on the ground ministry and so we want you to be not only sign up to be a part of that we want you to come even if you don't want to use a truck uh, but use your car for a trunk there's still plenty of other things that we do throughout the night and it's all hands on deck so we really want you to get involved with that see our guest relations table in the back but we are our department ministries are going to having are having a little bit of a friendly competition and so on each basket out there is labeled you've got family ministry you've got worship uh, department and discipleship ministries and there's multiple ones out there and we, the one the team that has the most candy by the has collected the most candy by a certain date wins some sort of a prize or something it's probably just bragging rights but it's really just an opportunity to try to incite people to give more on the candy on the side of candy so whatever ministry that you're in I invite you to this program. Go and get the good stuff, you know, yeah. don't go cheap. Go get that name yeah. brand candy, get the Hershey bars, you know, get the Tootsie Rolls, all that good stuff. Yeah. Airheads, praise the Lord, somebody. Go, there's a lot of good candy sales happening, so get that candy, bring it in, and put them in the buckets. Bless the basket that you of the ministry that you would like to see win, or just be nice to put some in all of them, and just get as much as you can, okay? Come on. Um, also, ladies, uh, we've been talking about this a lot, but that's just because we really want you to sign up and to be a part of it. Uh, don't forget, next month, uh, September 20th or the 21st, is our Fin Fire Conference. It is right here. We're going to be in the house again. I mean, it's our third Fin Fire Conference that we're going to be doing. It just gets better and better and better every year. Um, 
is going to be just an incredible night. Uh, Pastor Jennifer and pastors Jennifer and Danny and Chelsea and some of our other ladies have just been working year round on this thing, getting it planned, praying over it, and they've just got a really, really exciting weekend, uh, exciting weekend planned for you all. So we really want you to sign up and to be a part of that. There is a thirty dollar registration fee this year, but that covers. Uh, some desserts that you're going to have Friday night or covers your lunch and some the next day on Saturday and some goodie bags and things like that. So we really just uh, want you to be a part of it. And we, so please be sure to sign up for that. Well, Julie Bailey from Australia is going to be coming and speaking as well as some of our other pastors in our church and our conference. And it's just going to be, we're going to have worship and it's going to be amazing. So make sure that you get signed up for that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And last, really uh, big announcement before uh, we t I turn it over to Pastor Dave. Uh, we are usually have on Tuesdays around from like 11 to noon. We have uh, corporate prayer. We have we open up the building and we just kind of come together and walk the grounds, walk the facility, and just have a time to really pray and intercede together. But we recognize that that happens during the day, and a lot of times people are at work during the day. So what we are going to do is starting on September 9th. So not this next this upcoming Monday, but the next, we are going to actually be moving the corporate prayer from Tuesday mornings to Monday evenings, okay? So from, I believe, 6 to 7. So every Monday night from 6 to 7, doors are going to be open, and we're going to be coming together to pray. So if you are available, we really would love for you to come and join us. Um, you know, miracles happen when we get together and when we pray, and two or three are gathered, right? So this is just going to be a really something I'm very excited about because I'm unable to come to the Tuesdays usually because I'm at work as well. So now I will be able to come and be a part. So if you can, we encourage you to come out and join us and be a part of that. And we're going to see God begin to really, really move and do some really cool things. Amen. All right. So Pastor Dave is going to come at this time we do we are going to dismiss our youth and our children uh youth are going to be going out to the back doors and all of our harvest kids are going to be meeting pastor jeff right over here to, uh, to my right youth to the back and harvest kids right over here all right all right how's everybody doing Amen. you're slow but you're just waiting on okay, okay, okay. Um, I want to speak just a little bit more uh, toward the uh, the prayer situation, the moving of prayer. I, I heard the Lord uh, tell us to do this on Sunday morning um, in the middle of service. Um, and I, I was going to make the announcement on Sunday, um, but I felt that, that I needed to talk to our elders and I needed to talk to our staff um, and, uh, and get their heads wrapped around it and what God was saying to me. And they were all in agreement, 150%. And so I want to make sure that we cast adequate vision for what that's going to look like. How many of you have attended one of our Friday night prayer services that we start at 730? We usually roll till about 9 or 938. Raise your hand if you've, if you've been a part of one of those services. Okay. Mondays are going to look a little bit more like that. It will be from 6 to 7, but the band will be live. The worship team will be live. We'll be doing live music. There will be times where there will be a corporate, um, where someone, a microphone, myself, someone else on the staff, someone else on our intercessory prayer team will be helping to lead in prayer. There will be declarations and different things like that. But I just really sense God telling us to shift. And when God says shift, it, it always produces something. Amen. And so I really want to encourage you, Mondays from 6 to 7, it's going to begin on September the 9th, as Pastor Brian just declared, uh, but I really want to encourage you to be a part of that because I believe that we're going to see some incredible things happen. While we were singing tonight, though, I could not help but notice how our lyrical components work together. We were declaring who God says that we are. We do not believe that we are who God says we are, then God is a liar. Right. Everything else God has said then is not true. See, I want to tag in on what I said on Sunday because some of us have disqualified ourselves because of certain issues and certain circumstances in our lives. And we do not believe what God has said about us. It is reflected in what we say about ourselves. How we demean ourselves. How we talk bad about ourselves. How we say, well, I wish I looked like so-and-so. I wish I could sing like so-and-so. I wish I could be like so-and-so. And we push ourselves down. I, I'm, I'm trying to get you somewhere. We've got to believe what God says about ourselves. 
so that we can then stand in faith. Everybody say faith. faith. Only two things move God and they work in tandem agreement. Faith and praise are the only things that move God. And so if miracles happen when God moves, the only thing that moves God is my praise and my faith. Amen. If I'm stationary and silent, God isn't moving in my life. Right. Because right. he only responds to praise and faith which work together. So if I want to see things shift, if I want to see miracles happening in my life, then I've got to sing hallelujah until he comes again. Ah, yes. I'm sorry, I'm feeling this better than you're picking it up. The reality is, I've got to give God my highest praise always. Yes, yes. yes sir. Because what is hallelujah? Hallelujah is the highest praise. It is the only word in, in all languages that mean the same thing. Right, right. You can say hallelujah in every language and it means the same thing. You can be in Russia and say hallelujah and the church is going to know what you're saying. You can be in Mexico and say hallelujah and the church is going to know what you're saying. You can be in China and say hallelujah and the church is going to know what you say. It's the same thing in every language. It's the highest of praises. I'm going to preach whether you get with me or not. I, I feel this tonight. I said hallelujah is the highest praise. And the only way I'm going to see God move is if I learn how to sing hallelujah when all hell is breaking loose in my life. If I can learn how to sing hallelujah when I get dropped from my job. When I get a foul report from the doctor. Hallelujah. See, hallelujah. Y'all remember CeCe's song, Hallelujah is the Highest Praise. Yes, yes. I love that song. We used to do that song all the time. But I really want to get that in your spirit. I need you to understand what you've been singing all this time. You've been making declarations over your life that when you make those declarations and you sing them. I like the way St. Augustine says it. He says that a, uh, oh, excuse me, singing is a prayer prayed twice. I love that. It's so true. Singing is a prayer prayed twice with double intensity. So when I sing something, God holds me to it. Ah, that's good, Pastor. So we sing the old song, I surrender all. I surrender all. We sing that song, right? And then God says, oh, really? Yeah, come on. And then takes us at our confession and says, oh yeah, that last $100, give it to me. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, you got some time. I'll take that time. Why don't you serve in the nursery? Well, you know, I'm just not a child person. <laughs> well, no, you just said I surrender. Oh. Are, you, are you picking up what I'm laying down? Yeah. And so God holds us to that. So I want us, I really felt the inclination to really talk a little bit tonight about what we just sang so that it can resonate in your spirit and not just be something that you sing in here, but make it something that you sing in your car, that you sing in your house, that you sing on your job, that you sing in the marketplace, that it be a reflection of your relationship with God. Because when that happens, everything I'm about to preach about tonight can manifest in your life. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Somebody say something all at the same time. Say yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I like the way that sounded a whole lot better than what y'all been doing. <laughs> okay. I want you to grab your Bibles and turn with me to Galatians, the fifth chapter. I, I started this last week and I, I did there's it's greased right now in my spirit. And so I'm going to camp out here for a little bit. I've got the dry erase marker board because I'm going to do some teaching tonight. And I really want to unpack what I hear God saying to me that we've got to get into the, into the earth realm. We've got to get this in the church, not just our church, but the church and the body of, of Christ globally. We've got to get this. And it's an elementary thing, but we're missing it. I'll never forget, uh, my spiritual father uh, pastors a, a church in Panama City, 
And at one time they had a very large Christian school and their Christian school's basketball team would compete with all of the other, all the other high schools. So just your regular standard high schools would compete with this Christian school and they beat them all the time and win the national, and win, won national championship and state championships all the time. He was a big basketball guy. He and his coach would work together and they would meet with the team. And he said this one day when he was talking to a group of us pastors. He said, when my championship team starts losing games, I take them back to the basics. And I teach them dribbling and passing. I teach them the basics, the mechanics of basketball. Because if a championship team starts failing, it's because they're missing the basics. And I hear the Lord say that the problem with the body of Christ is we're missing some of the basics and we're failing miserably because we are, how do I say this? We are trying to do spiritual things in natural places. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to write this down because I, I feel like I feel the, the anointing to write tonight. Let's just hope I have an anointing to spell. Because sometimes, well, no, never mind. 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. I know I told you to turn to Galatians. Just write that down. 1 Corinthians, is that if I teach a little bit tonight? Yes, sir. 1 Corinthians, well, I'm going to teach you anyway. So 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, um, tells us of what? Talk to me. What's 1 Corinthians 12 about? Let me test some Bible students. What's that say? 1 Corinthians 12 is all about the gifts. And we say gifts. Yes. The gifts of the Spirit. As classical Pentecostals, we absolutely love that. Tongues, interpretation of tongues, miracles, words of knowledge, working of healings, all of those elements. We love all that kind of stuff. Galatians 5, though, is what? Come on, y'all. What am I writing? It's the fruit of the Spirit. These are the things that we don't focus on. We as classical Pentecostals focus right here. Oh, I want the power of God. I want the Spirit of God moving in our church, moving in our... Oh, we've got to have the power. But we need to understand something. This is the power of God, but this... is the character of God. And you cannot have the power of God without the character of God. And we have focused on power gifts for a very long time. So we've got individuals that can speak in tongues, but they don't love each other. They don't show up. Let a president get elected that isn't part of their party affiliation and love goes out the window. And now all of a sudden, honor drops by the wayside and we feel comfortable talking negatively about our leader. Yeah, I knew it would be quiet in this sanctified house. We have got to have the character of God so that we can accurately and appropriately use the power of God and no longer look like fools. No longer look foolish. Do I have your attention? I want us to begin to focus on the character of God so that the power of God can be demonstrated in purity and in holiness. Are right, you got that? Are you in Galatians 5, 22 through 23? says this, but the fruit of the Spirit produced by the Holy Spirit within you is divine love. Say love. love. In all its varied expressions, Joy that overflows, peace that subdues, patience that endures, kindness in action, a life full of virtue, faith that prevails, gentleness of heart, a strength in spirit. Never set the law above these qualities, for they are meant to be limitless. Never set limitations on the fruits of the Spirit because they are meant to be limitless. Although we act like we can run out of them. We make statements like 
Oh, I just don't have patience. And my back is to you now, so I can't see your facial expressions. But I automatically know in a church like this, that when we start talking about things like that, the people automatically start saying, oh me, yeah, that's how I roll. We say things like, you know, I stopped praying for patience a long time ago. Because when I started praying for patience, all hell started breaking loose in my life. Am I right? Am I right? We have this distorted view that this love and all the attributes of God's presence and God's spirit in his fruit is something that we have to muster up ourselves. And it's based on maturity. Discipleship is based on maturity. The fruit of the Spirit is based on you yielding to the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. The same level that you yield to a tongue, you've got to yield to love. Yeah, okay, all right, yeah. I'm your best friend and I feel it. Love is our topic. Love is our heading. Love is everything and all of the other gifts excuse me, all of the other fruits are up under love. They are descriptive of attributes of, of what love is. Are you hearing me? Now I want to take you back here. The fruit of the Spirit is produced by the Holy Spirit. Within you it is divine. Love ever say divine. divine. This is something that the Spirit does through you. But you must be an active participant. Uh, come on somebody fruit is the byproduct or the consequence of something else so fruit is what is born out of the Holy Spirit so I want you to imagine that when you get filled with the Spirit that the Holy Spirit moves inside of you with two very large suitcases and in each of these suitcases there are nine things in each suitcase there are the gifts of the Spirit 1 Corinthians 12 and there's the fruits of the Spirit, Galatians 5, and he moves in with all those things. How many of us have been in circumstances and situations where we've been talking to someone, or a spouse, a friend, a relative, somebody that could get on our nerves, somebody that can make us mad, and we start to get aggravated, and we want to say that thing that's in our head, and we hear something in the back of our mind that says, don't say it. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the Holy Spirit. That is not your conscience. Because your conscience has been established and developed by your culture. The Holy Spirit, however, doesn't care what your culture is. Are you hearing me? That little voice on the inside of you that is not jumping up and down making thunderous sounds on the inside of you that's not grabbing you by the nap of the neck and shaking you around it's just that gentle voice on the inside of you that says don't say that don't go there think you need to calm down that's the Holy Spirit allowing the fruits of the Spirit to be the filtration system to your emotions that's what must happen in the life of a believer. How many of you understand that emotions were given to you to accent life, not control it? Does that make sense? God gave us emotions kind of like salt, paprika, pepper, other things that accent food. Nobody would sit down and grab a thing of salt and just start eating it by the spoonful. If they did, we would know there's something wrong with that person right because that is not the way we roll but we we do do that with our emotions and when we find folk that feel about things the same way we feel we hang out with them and we perpetuate that behavior y'all are quiet in this church tonight are you hearing what i'm saying i think you're quiet because we're all guilty right let me read this to you Jesus says, and I don't know about you, but Jesus is the ultimate example in my life. If Jesus said that this is the way that it is, that's the way that it is. Can we all get an agreement on that? John, the 13th chapter, the 34th verse through the 35th verse says this. I give you a new commandment. Love each other. 
just as much as I have loved you. Okay, there's, there's, where, there's where the rubber meets the road. Love each other like I love you. There's the standard. For when you demonstrate the same love that I have for you by loving one another, then everyone will know that you're my follower. That is how people know that we belong to Jesus. Not because we're tongue talkers. Not because we prophesy. Not because we put on our Sunday clothes and go to church. Not because we have a Sunday school class or a teaching assignment with our children or our young people. Jesus said, everybody will know that you're like me when you act like me and how you act like me is love like I do. And that is an unfortunate reality that most of us fall very low beneath. We, have to love each other. we do have to love each other, Anthony McKay. That's exactly right. We have got to move into this, and we have to understand. We have to understand that what what is this love? Where does it originate? Can you read that? Yeah. What's it say? Divine. Say it again. Divine. Say it again. Divine. Say it again. Divine. It is divine love. It is a love that God does through you. It is not a love that you can ever measure up to and store up enough of it in yourself and then just appropriate it because you're mature and because you're disciplined. It is divine. Now, I'll be honest with you. The more that you do mature, the more that you do develop, the more of the word that gets on the inside of you, the easier that it is for you to listen to the Holy Spirit and manifest the love, but it's still His love. It's not you. Let's examine deeper what He says about His love. 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak to you with eloquence in earth's many languages and in heavenly tongues of angels, yet I did not express myself with love, my words would be reduced to the hollow sound of nothing more than a clanging cymbal. When I read this in my, in my spirit, how many of y'all remember those, those toys back in the day that was the monkey? The most aggravating and annoying toy that they've ever developed. You want to grab the batteries or the power button and shift that thing off as quick as you can. And every time I read this scripture, that's what I see. Then when I do what seems to be an incredible thing, but I do it without love, I'm like that monkey that's just annoying the mess out of everybody. If I were to have the gift of prophecy with the profound understanding of God's hidden secrets, and if I possess unending supernatural knowledge, and if I had the greatest gift of faith that could move mountains, but have never learned to love, then I'm nothing. You know, I've been in settings and circumstances, and, and I'm, I'm not one to name drop. I'm not one to point fingers. I do not believe in judging uh, ministers or ministries. I just don't do it. Uh, I don't. Uh, first of all, I understand that when I start to do that, then, then people start doing that against me. And I've got enough flaws to not aid and abed in that. Good. I don't believe in lifting up my voice against another ministry. I just don't do it. But I, I have been in settings and circumstances with people of influence in the kingdom. And it has always boggled my mind how they could flow with such a powerful anointing and do incredible things and prophesy and see people healed and do incredible things that if I were to name names, you would know who I'm talking about. Yet when they go into a green room or a ready room or behind the scenes, they treat people like dirt. Right, Pastor. And I always think of the scripture and I say, God, I don't want that. I'm not saying I don't want to be like them. I'm saying I want to be like that. I want to have that level of love that I'm consistent wherever I go. Where I'm the same in the pulpit that I am in, in, at Popeye's. I felt an anointing when I said Popeye's. I've not weighed in on this whole chicken sandwich thing yet because I've, I've not tried Popeye's and so right now Chick-fil-A still rules and I've gotten mixed reviews I've got tons of people say that Popeye's is just nasty I got other folks that say Popeye's is the bomb and so I, I, I just don't know but, but, but I've got to be the same way that I am in the pulpit that I am at Popeye's that I am at Walmart that I am at home with my 12 year old ah, that's good 
pastor right there. If I am so generous as to give everything I own to feed the poor and to offer my body to be burned as a martyr without pure motive, excuse me, without the pure motive of love, I have gained nothing of value. Paul is breaking this down so that we understand where true honor lies. What we really do need to be looking for is love, not all these other peripherals. Love is large and incredibly patient. So the moment you say you don't have patience, you admit you don't have love. Okay. You're quiet, means you're guilty. Love is gentle and consistently kind to all. It refuses to be jealous when blessings come to someone else. Love does not brag about one's achievements, nor inflate its own importance. Love does not traffic in shame and disrespect, nor selfishly seek its own honor. Love is not easily irritated or quick to take offense. Love joyfully celebrates honesty and finds no delight in what is wrong. Love is a safe place of shelter, for it never stops believing the best for others. Love never takes failure as defeat, for love never gives up. Love never stops loving. It extends beyond the gift of prophecy, which eventually fades away. It's more enduring than tongues, which will one day fall silent. Love remains long after words of knowledge are forgotten. Our present knowledge and our prophecies are but partial. But when love's perfection arrives, the partial fades away. When I was a child, I spoke about childish matters. For I saw things like a child because I reasoned like a child. But the day came when I matured, and I set aside my childish ways. For now we see but a faint reflection of riddles and mysteries as though reflected in a mirror, but one day we will see face to face. My understanding is incomplete now, but one day I will understand everything, just as everything about me has been fully understood. Until then, here's where the rubber meets the road, until then, there are three things that remain. Faith, hope, and love. Yet love surpasses them all. So above all else, let love be the beautiful prize for which you run. I know that I took some time to read the entire chapter of 1 Corinthians 13. But I believe that it's something that we should be reminded of on a regular basis. I believe it should be something that we throw up in front of ourselves on a regular basis so that we are always challenged to tap into the spirit. Now, I, I, I'm running out of time, but I, I just got to say this one last point and then I'm going I'm to go ahead and let you go. The fruit of the spirit comes with Holy Spirit and his infilling. When he comes into our lives, I've already shared this with you, he brings those two suitcases with him. He brings 18 attributes. Those 18 attributes are then at our disposal to allow him, excuse me, to use those things in us and through us on a regular basis. The Apostle Paul got this just like we got this. And he made this statement that permeates his entire life. He says this in Philippians 4, 11 through 12. I'm not saying this because I'm in need. For I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to be in plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in every and any situation. What is that secret? Tapping in to the voice of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. Causing us to exploit what is God in every circumstance? It is because of this reality that Acts 16 tells us that at midnight, Paul and Silas sang praises unto God because they had this at work in their lives. I need you to understand what got Paul and Silas locked up 
obeying God, preaching, got them locked up. Nowhere in scripture do I see them quoting scriptures over the chains. Why? Because he was filled with the Holy Spirit just like you and I are. He sang praise because he knew God was the only one that could do something about his situation. So he decided to not let his situation be his focal point. He decided to let his God be his focal point. And he tapped in to the voice of the Spirit saying, don't look at the peripheral. Look at why you are where you are. It's because God is leading you. It's because God loves you. It's because God is right there in the middle of what's going on. Yes. It is because of this reality that every time we see Paul, he's living out. I found in whatsoever state I'm in, therein to be content. So whether he's shipwrecked, whether he's imprisoned, or whether he's preaching on the street corner, he's found contentment where? In the Holy Ghost. Because he's learned how to allow the Holy Spirit to activate fruit only inside of him. He's learned how to submit to Holy Spirit so that when anger would be our natural response, what comes out of us is the fruit of the Spirit. And I please don't want to misunderstand. There's nothing wrong with anger as long as anger doesn't take control of me and lead me to be out of control. And then when I'm out of control, I'm in sin. Does that make sense? It's okay to be angry though. Jesus got angry and he went through the temple with a, with a, a cord and a rope and he overturned the tables of the money That He was angry, but he did not allow his anger to control him. He allowed the fruit of the spirit to control him. I'll say this one, one more time so that it really gets into your head. The fruit of the Spirit is your emotional filtration system. When you, you know when you start boiling in a certain area. You know when you start to get out of control. I would like to encourage you that when that starts happening in your life, for you to say, Holy Spirit, help me. To take authority over what's happening right now. Govern my actions. Govern my thoughts. Govern my emotions. Because right now I'm not going to lose control. Are you hearing me? And allow Holy Spirit to take authority in your life. I, I, I wanted to talk about love. When we come back together again, I'm going to exploit joy. I'm going to say joy. 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 Uh, see, I don't have time to talk about this, but joy is not happiness. Joy is not happiness. Happiness is based on happenings. Joy, however, is predicated and based on the fruit of the Spirit. And it's limitless. It's abounding. It overflows. It can be described in the Greek as calm delight. It can be described in the Greek as something that is given, not something received. But somebody, oh, I want to keep going, but I can't. This is the reality. When I learn how to give joy to Colton, then Colton can receive joy, it builds his joy, and then he can reciprocate that by launching it back to me, and then I've received it, but only because I gave it. We got frustrated believers that want joy, but never give it. We got frustrated believers that want love, but never give it. And their mentality is, I'll give it when I get it. You got it already. <sighs> I gotta stop. You get? Are you picking up what I'm laying down? Yeah. Are y'all all right with this? Yeah. I'm excited about this. It's grabbed hold of my spirit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna work it to the ground. So just, I'd encourage you to start studying it on your own and start calling out those fruits in your life on a daily basis. Just about every day, I pray that the fruit of the spirit would exemplify itself in my life. Why? Because I can be cantankerous. Because I, I can, my dad used to call me Mr. Intensity. I, I know what it's like to be intense about stuff. I, I, and I, ask my staff, they'll tell you. Ask my wife, are you hearing me? So I need the fruit of the Spirit, because y'all won't like me without it. And we won't like you without it. I don't care how nice you think you are. Ushers, if you wouldn't mind making your way and getting in place. For those of you that are watching us online, you can participate 
by texting and by giving online. You can go to our website and access all of that information. It's at harvestjacks.com. It will also, there will also be a link on the screen. You can do that. Please do so. So into what God is doing here. Not, not, not in place of maybe your church or some, something else if you're attached to someone else. We don't want that to be a reality. But if you are hearing God say so, we want you to so partner with us to help us reach our region of Northeast Florida and all the things that God's called us to do. We're honored that you're watching us. Come on, yeah, come on real quick, ushers. Thank you so much. We got us for stepping in, getting ready. Hallelujah. And it's good to see you guys. Stand your feet all over the building. If you're watching online, you can take your offering and hold it up, hold your receipt up. Hold it up. Father, I just declare in Jesus' name that you bless every gift and you bless every giver. I thank you, Lord, for increase and abundance and overflow, that it would match your word, that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing that they don't have capacity for. I declare that over them right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, that their portion is going to be what your word declares, abundance and things that they don't have capacity for. I declare that over them now in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now, you said, Amen. you can be released to sow of your evening tithe and offering. I know that I spoke a blessing before they gave it, but now we lay our hands on it physically and we bless it and we declare God that it will be compounded and that it will overflow and that it will bless them as well as this house in Jesus' mighty name. Thank y'all so much for helping us out tonight. Stand with me all over this building. I'm about to bless you. I bless you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. I would that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. I claim abundance and supernatural increase to come and be one with you all the days of your life. In all of your getting, get understanding. Don't just discover, but fulfill your destiny. Hug about five, ten people before you leave this building and know that Jesus loves you, and so do we. Peace out, Harvest.